All right, I've got the original, of course, newly cleaned and uh, new O-rings and filters. The original injectors are reinstalled and I've got them attached to the rail just by the O-ring. Of course, you always run the risk of when you pressurize the rail that the, uh, the pressure is going to blow them right off. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. So next step is turn the key on, activate the fuel pump, pressurize the rail, and see if any of these link, leak. And well, none of them got blown off the rail. I don't see any leaks there. Well, now I do since I just uh, released the force. These two, though, are suspect. Hmm. Well, I think I'll do it one more time. Turn off the camera so I can fix that last one there. Okay, I just pressurized the rail again. These are the originals. And I've got slight, slight misting on the first one. Uh, I just blew the pressure on that one again. It was dry. That one's dry, and the last one's dry. So... I'm going to say the originals are better than the new ones we got off of eBay. And I really do not believe that what I did that possibly contaminated them has caused every single plunger not to be, or pintle not to be able to seat. That, I mean, all eight, that just makes no sense. I suspect they were probably water damaged when the, uh, uh, the seller renovated them or whoever renovated them and uh, sent them out without checking. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is do a cleaning on a couple of these just to verify. And then uh, I'm going to reinstall the originals. We'll be back. Well, at this point, I got kind of a head of recording, but I got all eight fuel injectors are in I got the rails tightened up harness tightened up of course I got the upper manifold throttle body back on EGR valve tightened up all the other uh, connections are made along with the throttle I've replaced both of the filters there was a uh, oil filter right up there and then I replaced a transmission filter, which is also another inline filter. And you can see it kind of peeking down right here. So at this point, it's just a matter of running it uh, in short periods since I drained all the oil and there had been fuel in the oil. So I just want to not uh, go straight to hot right off the bat. So, to aid in that, I already threw the bottle away, but I put, a, I put a whole quart of the Lucas oil stabilizer in there, which is basically just a thickener, you know, like STP oil treatment. And then, of course, I put new oil in it, and I'm just starting the engine up in short periods of, you know, about five minutes each, till I'm sure that that oil has... Uh, reached everywhere that it needs to be because i was kind of concerned since the previous oil was so thin from the fuel but uh i would probably say that the previous oil cleaned the heck out of the engine when i ran it mm, that fuel mix hopefully there was no further damage so at this point we're just going to keep it running i'm going to continue to put everything back together and uh, then we'll check the fuel pressure again at the moment it was still flaky and I'm not sure if it's a gauge or not I mean it was going 
down a lot slower before I replaced the, I mean, yeah, before I replaced the fuel injectors, it was going down a lot faster. So pressure is dropping down to about 30 and holding for a period of time, then dropping further. And my biggest concern is just the fact that when I connect the gauge to the Schrader valve, that just that simple connection right there might have been bleeding air. Because I have checked it and double checked every single place I can think of, and there is no fuel leaking anywhere. I've checked all the uh, quick disconnects for the fuel lines. I've checked the injectors, just uh, every single place. So I might, uh, after I do get it running and get everything else assembled, I might run it down to a shop and have them check the fuel pressure for me, and get their opinion. So at the moment, it's just reassembly time. All right, we're back at square one. Got everything connected, except for the uh, air intake channels. I'll get those on a little bit later. And it should be good enough to try to start. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's not good. Let's get back to this. All right, just double check the in couple of the injectors, make sure they were still pulsing. They were, they weren't clogged up again. Just felt like I had to check that. And I found a couple wires off. One was off the coil. We'll go figure. So this time, hopefully, it's gonna be a go. the first time in I don't know seven eight months so we finally got to this point now I'm gonna start reassembling all the other things that I've taken off in the meantime inner fender liners vacuum reservoir I mean it's still attached but just hanging there got to put the uh, air intake on and then finish filling up the differential after I can reverse this get it more um, more level and then I got to pull a tire off or two to uh, check the brakes in the rear something's going on here oh and I also got to tighten up the EGR haven't done that yet but now we know it's alive we'll be back <laughs> 